I'm honored to join you tonight to celebrate 10 outstanding librarians and the thousands more that you represent. This award is truly significant because the nominations received from across the country show that libraries continue to play a critical role in our democracy and that librarians are once again on the front lines of a battle that will shape the future of our country. It's a battle that's fought largely out of you and the heroes, you, are people who didn't seek a career of confrontation but who live lives of principle and meaning, understanding that the gift of knowledge is the greatest gift that we can give one another. One of the hallmarks of a great civilization is the preservation of and access to information, libraries. We all know that the library at Alexandria was one of the wonders of the ancient world, and we've all learned that our founding fathers believed that libraries were essential to the growth of America. Benjamin Franklin helped to found the Library Company of Philadelphia, and Thomas Jefferson's personal library became the Library of Congress. But this illustrious history doesn't explain why libraries are so often under attack, even in our own time. Why is it that Mao's army destroyed Tibetan libraries? Why did the Germans target the medieval library in Louvain, Belgium, and follow that with the sweeping destruction and confiscation of libraries throughout Central Europe? Why did the Serbs burn the great multicultural Bosnian National Library? And here at home, why were nine people arrested in 1961 during the first read-in at a segregated public library in Jackson, Mississippi? And why did the Patriot Act seek to obtain the personal borrowing records of library patrons? Not only because libraries are important symbols of a civilized society, but because they are, in a sense, tabernacles of personal freedom freedom of thought, freedom of expression, freedom of opportunity, and the true test of liberty, freedom to dissent. In times of great political turmoil, libraries are a bastion of civil liberties. But in calmer times, they're integrated into every aspect of our lives. One of the most exciting rituals of childhood is getting our first library card. And last year, one third of all Americans over the age of 15, or 77 million people, used a public library. There could be no more compelling statistic, yet once again, libraries are under attack, this time from an insidious adversary, indifference and lack of funds. Access to knowledge is seen as a luxury when times are tough, though in a difficult economic climate, we know that people need and use libraries more than ever. Libraries are no longer hushed reading rooms, but busy social hubs for the exchange of life skills and information. They become community centers in the very best sense, places where we build community and weave together lives and dreams. The unemployed come to find job training and job opportunities. New immigrants come to learn English. Students use the library for college readiness and college access. And adolescents can explore difficult social and emotional issues in the safe space of a library. I've seen this firsthand in my work with the New York City Public Schools. Classroom libraries play a vital role in students' intellectual development, and school libraries fill a larger void in their lives. A great school library becomes the heart of a school and the center of the larger community. A great school librarian understands that kids can't succeed without the support of parents, teachers, business partners, and 21st century research and writing skills. That's why we've made libraries a special focus of the New York City school reform efforts. Under Barbara Stripling's leadership, the DOE has created a new curriculum, which is a national model, and trained an energized, creative, professional cadre of school librarians who understand that they have the power to make a difference, that they're no longer the person who just keeps everyone quiet, but they are really one of the most important teachers that the students have. At the Fund for Public Schools, we've learned that when a principal and a librarian work together to make literacy a real priority, a relatively small amount of money can make a huge difference in the culture of a school community. Over the past eight years, we've given $8.5 million to schools in 225 small competitive grants. These bring schools up to date technologically, support family literacy workshops, build collections for English language learners, and provide comfy furniture where kids can hang out with a book. Now as we move towards implementation of the Common Core Standards, the role of the librarian is becoming even more important. As Ralph Aldo Emerson wrote many years ago, be a little careful about your library. Do you foresee what you will do with it? Very little, to be sure. But the real question is, 
what will it do with you? You will come here and get books that will open your eyes and your ears and your curiosity and turn you inside out or outside in. Congratulations to all of you and thanks so much. Thank you, Carolyn, for coming and gracing this occasion. Uh, fellow librarians and educators and citizens of New York and the nation. This is a special year for Carnegie Corporation of New York because it marks the 100th anniversary of the foundation Andrew Carnegie created to carry out his philanthropy during his lifetime and to carry it forward to the future. During our century of work, one of the proudest achievements is the part that Carnegie Corporation played in the first major cause that Andrew Carnegie supported and the one that was always closest to his heart, helping to build public libraries. Not one, not two, not 100, several thousand. And most importantly, that these have to be free libraries. Mr. Carnegie believed that libraries are essential to strength and progress of American society. They are the critical purposes they serve. They democratize access to information and knowledge. They empower local communities. But most importantly, they empower individuals to fulfill their aspirations and their potential. Libraries are among the first and most important institutions of our cultures. They embody the concept of lifelong education. After all, nobody can graduate from a library or wants to. There are no <laughs> examinations, midterms, there are no graduations. Libraries do not, do not give out diplomas. Libraries have no graduation ceremonies, then they don't give exams, as I mentioned. The only condition a library asks its users to honor is to do justice to their own imagination, their own curiosity, and their own thirst for knowledge, and in the process to achieve their own independence of mind, spirit, and position in society. For all of us, libraries are both the symbol and living expression not only of culture and history and learning, but also of the heritage of mankind, humankind. Walk down the aisles of a library and you're traveling through the record of civilization, the triumph of and failures, its legacy of intellectual, scientific, and artistic achievements. Hence, the library represents humanity's collective memory. It is more than just a repository. It's a truly instrument of civilization. The library is a laboratory of human endeavor, human inspirations, a window to the future, a wellspring of action. The library is a source of self renewal It's the link between the solitary individual and collective mankind. It represents our community. The library is the university of universities containing the source and unity of knowledge. Almost everybody's life has been enriched by a teacher or what they learn in a library by a librarian. But libraries would not be wonderful teaching and learning places that they are without librarians. And that is why we are here tonight to celebrate libraries and their librarians who are the true keepers of the flame of knowledge. 